All right, so I think it's safe for me to guess that you know what an iceberg video is. They're pretty big here on YouTube and chances are this isn't your first one. But a brief explanation is that they are visual guides to certain properties filled with assorted topics, trivia, and theories involving the subject ranked in order of notoriety. The more well-known stuff is higher towards the top, and the more obscure stuff hides in the depths. And that's basically it. The iceberg I'll be covering today focuses on the Adult Swim show Smiling Friends created by Zach Hadel and Michael Cusack. It was created by this user on Reddit. Feel free to check out the original post in the description below. And with that said, let's dive in. Chills as the Cafe Customer In episode 3 of the show, there is a scene where Pim enters a cafe. As he enters, there is a certain background character asking the barista for the number 15 special, and the character has a very distinctive voice. If you don't know, this character is voiced by the YouTuber Chills from the Top 15's YouTube account. Chills is infamous, or famous, for his Top 15 Mysteries Solved by 4chan video, wherein he talks about the Burger King foot lettuce post that was put on 4chan in 2012. The clip of his explanation has gone viral for his, um, distinct delivery, and has spawned countless memes and imitations which I'd wager you're familiar with. Number 15, Burger King foot lettuce. The last thing you'd want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus, but as it turns out, that might be what you get. So, I suppose someone working on Smiling Friends thought it would be funny to give Chills a cameo. And of course, he is asking for the number 15 special. Desmond's Big Day Out. This refers to the first episode and pilot of the entire series. In this episode, Charlie and Pim have to convince a guy named Desmond to give life a second chance before he, uh, does the S word. It's a superb pilot, one of my personal favorite episodes of the series, and without it, we wouldn't have smiling friends at all. Jeremy the Demon Jeremy is a minor character in the 8th episode of Smiling Friends. He is introduced as Charlie's only form of entertainment in hell, and his whole shtick gets really old really quickly. Old enough for Charlie to threaten violence if Jeremy ever does it again, which he later does, but Jeremy does get his revenge near the end of the episode. Airing the entire first season This is a simple one. The first season of Smiling Friends, Bar the Pilot, was released all at once on January 9th, 2022. Originally, this wasn't the plan. The show was initially going to be released on a weekly schedule, but Adult Swim decided to do a surprise premiere of the entire season of the show on the first night. It wasn't advertised on any TV guide, so fans were totally taken aback when the second season was followed by the third, and the fourth, and so on. Realistic Pim this refers to a shot of Pim at the end of the first episode of the show, where the show's level of detail goes up by several orders of magnitude to what can be only described as grotesque. It's reminiscent of a lot of those up-close shots from Spongebob of characters looking bizarre and disgusting. I actually didn't know this was from Smiling Friends until I watched the show. I had seen some friends posting it since 2020 not knowing what it was, so I was shocked when Pim's up-close and personal face of depression showed up on my screen when I watched the show for the first time. Frowning Friends this refers to the seventh episode of the show, where Pim and Charlie have to face off against their evil opposites, Grim and Gnarly, otherwise known as the Frowning Friends. The Frowning Friends want to make the entire world miserable and do so by crushing the dreams of everyone they meet. This episode is one of my favorites, the reason being all of its hilarious moments, including the DJ spit scene and the boss's descent into madness. 3D Squelton 3D Squelton refers to a one-off character in the Frowning Friends episode that Charlie and Pim try to cheer up in his time of need. Charlie recommends he try selling balloons, which Squelton likes the idea of. Sadly, the frowning friends quickly come over and convince 3D Squelton that balloon making isn't worth it. What's notable about 3D Squelton, besides the fact that he's 3D, is that he is voiced by the one and only Harry Partridge, a classic YouTube animator. Harry also voiced the Smormoo announcer and led the animation of Mip in the Enchanted Forest episode. Oni Plays References Oni Plays is the Let's Play channel of Chris O'Neill, a good friend and frequent collaborator of the show and its creators, and a lot of the common inside jokes and bits from the channel have made their way onto Smiling Friends. Things like the scene where the tree demon gets viciously dismembered and eaten were first joked about in videos, and that's just one of many examples. There's a whole comprehensive video on it all, but what I said is just the gist. Zach Hadel and Michael Cusack most of you already know this, but Smiling Friends as a show is masterminded by the two animators Zach Hadel and Michael Cusack. Their claim to fame before Smiling Friends is their YouTube channels and respective careers in animation. Zach Cadle specifically is known for his Hellbender series along with the Get Out of My Car video, which is actually his most viewed one. That kind of surprises me. The YouTube careers of these two played a big part in the hype surrounding Smiling Friends, and I don't think I'm alone when I say that I see the creation of the show in the first place as a big win for YouTubers and the perceived legitimacy of the content made on this site. 
It's really awesome being able to see all these notable YouTube personalities that I grew up watching, being able to conquer the old world of cable television, and that to me is one of the most exciting things about the show. Shrimpina. Shrimpina is the ex-girlfriend of the shrimp character in the third episode of the show, and pretty much all we know about her is her name. In the episode, Pim tries to get in touch with her at her workplace but accidentally goes to the wrong address, and mistakes her for a character that we eventually learn to be named Jennifer. At the big reveal, the show actually cracks a joke about Pim's mistake that someone would expect her to be a shrimp, given her name, which he doesn't really have the best response to. The look Pim, I know it's our job meme. This refers to the scene in the first episode of the show where Charlie tries to convince Pim to give up on trying to cheer up their client, Desmond. This scene became a huge exploitable meme, and countless variations of it have been made. I'm sure some of you were exposed to the show because you came across one of the bits inspired by the scene, just because of how all over the place it was on sites like Twitter. Bumpers. This refers to some of the TV bumpers that air on Adult Swim themed around smiling friends. I actually think they're really well done, and a lot of them are very interesting visually. In Memories Of. During the end credits of every single episode of Smiling Friends, there is an obituary screen dedicated to random made-up people and characters. For example, in the first episode, the obituary is dedicated to Jonathan Q. Shrimpling, who seems to have died when he was only 13. The image is actually just an edited photo of Adam Paloyan, an animator in front of Zach Hadel who has contributed to the show. In the second episode, the obituary is written to Quentin the Animal Gwillington. I'm not totally sure who the photo is of this time around, but I did read someone online predicting it was of Michael Cusack. The third episode screen is of Smormu James Carter, who sadly passed away right after he became a permanent member of the Smiling Friends cast. Followed by Smormu is the Lovecraftian XL Space Percent QZ9 Star 4, which, uh, yeah. Next we have Simon S. Salty, who is the same character that died in the episode his obituary is featured in. Then we have Dr. Terence Nimbilon II, who sadly died at the age of 54. Episode 7 has Sir Oliver Peanut, and the finale is dedicated to Lieutenant Damien Xavier Coat, who hasn't passed away yet, but will pass away in 2025. It's predestined. It's fate. Gilbert Gottfried as God. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Near the end of the season finale, Charlie gets rescued from the depths of hell by God, and God happens to be voiced by the renowned comedian Gilbert Gottfried. Cool. Bliblies. Bliblies are the bizarre pests that infest the Smiling Friends office in the first episode of the show. They are bizarre purple creatures that seem to steal small objects like cheese and paper clips. They also seem to nest in a giant ball sack looking thing. When Alan pursues one lone Blibly in the pilot episode, they all attack him at once and try and crucify him. However, their cooperation doesn't seem to be very methodical, as you later see the original Blibly stabbing another one to death with a paper clip he stole. Anyway, Desmond finds his way out of depression after shooting one in self-defense and finding his purpose in life. Exterminating Bliblies in violent, ruthless ways. Good for him. Sucks for the Bliblies, though. Goblin Caught on Tape. This one is a bit speculative, but bear with me. Goblin Caught on Tape is a production company started by Zack Hadel. You can see its closing vanity logo at the end of every episode. The company name has become an inside joke among fans of the show, and the origin of it is a bit hard to find. But if you watch the opening to the fifth episode of Zack Hadel's podcast, Schmucks, there is a short segment dedicated to creature sightings, which parodies clickbait top 10 videos claiming to show actual footage of goblins. It's actually narrated by Chills, a YouTuber I mentioned earlier who cameos in Smiling Friends. Apparently, this running goblin may or may not be Zack Hadel himself. I can neither confirm nor deny this claim. Frog Mania. This refers to the obsessive fan culture that surrounds Mr. Frog in the Smiling Friends universe. Mr. Frog is a longtime TV personality who is not only phenomenally popular, but also phenomenally rich. He is loved by billions and regularly gets millions of viewers live. All those people coming to watch him run around and eat bugs. Good for him. Smormu. I assume the SH in the title was a typo. Smormu is a joke character that appears in the third episode of Smiling Friends. He appears to be a big fan of Hillary Clinton, even though it's been like six years since she ran for president. Smormu came with a vote. Viewers were encouraged to vote whether they wanted Smormu to join the cast of Smiling Friends, and by the end of the episode, Smormu narrowly makes it in. He actually loses the popular vote, but due to the electoral college system, he is permanently added to the Smiling Friends cast. Sadly, he dies right after, and that's the last we ever saw of him. I know some of you are going to say this is obvious, but just for clarity, I should say that this vote was never a real thing, and the 5550100 number isn't actually a working phone number. The whole thing is just a joke about the Electoral College in US presidential elections, specifically the 2016 election where Donald Trump won the electoral vote despite losing the popular vote. That's also why he has the Hillary shirt. 
Newground slash internet VA cameos. This is something I already covered partially with 3D Squelton and Chills, but Smiling Friends has a ton of guest appearances from major figures from YouTube, Newgrounds, and other parts of the internet. Chris O'Neill, otherwise known as Oni NG, provided the voice for Smormu among a couple of others. Mike from Red Letter Media voices Desmond in the first episode. Also in the pilot, Tom Fulp, the guy who created Newgrounds, appears as Pim's sister's boyfriend. David Firth, an animator and musician best known for creating Salad Fingers, voices Shrimp in Shrimp's Odyssey. So yeah, the cast of Smiling Friends is stacked with notable cameos, and there are a couple more that I will cover later on in the iceberg. Hopefully one day, there will be a switchy cameo on the show. One day. The Enchanted Forest. This is the title of the location visited in episode 7 of the show, which goes by the same name. Pim has wanted to go there all his life, and he finally gets the chance here. It's one of the most popular episodes for sure, likely for its unique setting and references to fantasy media. The character Mip, who joins the gang for most of the runtime, is also really interesting. His design and animation was specifically done to resemble the animated version of Bilbo Baggins from the 1977 adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit. I mean, just look at those detailed hands. It's like they're twins. Also, I guess I'll say it now because it sadly isn't anywhere on the iceberg, but you know how at the end of the episode it's revealed that Mip was actually trying to kill the princess with a bomb? Yeah, uh, that's actually a reference to a real event involving the Icelandic musician Björk. In 1996, an obsessed fan tried sending a package that would set off a bomb when being opened to her to hopefully take her life. Fortunately, the package was intercepted and she wasn't hurt. But the case gets really bizarre if you look further into the culprit's life and some of the writings and footage left behind. I won't go into detail here, but it is kind of a doozy. Zack actually talks about the event several times on assorted podcasts and episodes of Oni Plays, which suggests that he was inspired by it when making the Smiling Friends episode. Shrimp Wearing Drip this refers to a fan edit of the iconic shot of Shrip wearing a leather jacket and death metal t-shirt in the third episode. The edit has him wearing the iconic Goku drip outfit instead. That's pretty much it. The Alien in Spider War. This refers to a long-running 1,000-year war that took place within the Enchanted Forest. When Pim and Charlie visit the forest to cheer up the princess, Charlie actually resolves the conflict between the two tribes on the way. If you're wondering why aliens are in this seemingly medieval fantasy environment, it's because it's more of a science fantasy thing, not unlike video games like Xenoblade or Final Fantasy. The Demon Past the Rickety Bridge This refers to the forest demon that pursues Pim in the Halloween special. When Pim goes too deep into the forest, he gets lost and almost gets killed by the monster. The monster chases him out of the woods and even into the Smiling Friends headquarters. However, Pim emerges victorious after all the people in the building accuse the demon of wearing blackface and consequently beat him to death and eat his remains. It's a weird episode. Balloon Helium Crisis Was Predicted What I assume this refers to is the joke about the helium crisis in the seventh episode of the show, Frowning Friends. When Charlie and Pim try to encourage 3D Squelton to pursue balloon making as a career, Gnarly quickly rains on their parade. He lets Squelton know that helium is a quickly depleting resource that is predicted to be all gone from Earth in the next 15 to 20 years. And that's not entirely wrong. The prediction that it will be totally gone in that time frame is certainly pessimistic, but it's not based on anything untrue. Helium is effectively a non-renewable resource on Earth and we are constantly running out of it. So, uh, Gnarly was kind of right. Of course, there may be ways to get more helium in the future, but for the time being, the only way we can really harvest helium is from the decay of radioactive rocks, and that's not exactly the most reliable way of doing it. Realistic Pym Model I'm not entirely sure what this means. The realistic Pym obviously refers to the shot mentioned earlier in this video of Pym at the end of the first episode. It may refer to the full 2D render of it, which I cannot show in its entirety due to a certain body part of Pym's peeking out of his left pant leg. But the word model makes me wonder if it's trying to imply that there's a full 3D model of it, which I highly doubt. The artwork certainly has good depth, but it still looks like 2D art to me. I could be wrong though. Grease references Stone Toss's face. I was looking forward to this part. Grease is a joke character in the fifth episode of the show, who violently murdered Simon as Salty. Like his name implies, he is in a mobile puddle of grease on the floor of the Salty's restaurant. What's notable about him to some fans is his face's resemblance to the art style of the controversial political cartoonist Stone Toss, which I suppose is there. That being said, it's not like Stone Toss is the only person who's ever drawn mouths with the accentuated upper jaw. I don't personally believe this is a direct intentional reference to him. Interestingly enough, Stone Toss has claimed on Twitter to have worked on the show, but that is just part of a wider meme where he claims to have worked on popular mainstream animation. 
Sadly, the claim can't really be concretely confirmed or denied, because Stone Toss is an anonymous figure, and if he ever did display his public identity, he would probably be fired immediately and blacklisted from the industry. Also, because this is never mentioned in the iceberg, a fun fact about the Grease character is that he was originally intended to be voiced by Chris Chan. The reason Chris Chan never actually made it into the final product is actually not related to the recent arrest, interestingly enough. It was described by Zack as just a budgetary thing, where essentially the cameo would have been too costly to properly work in, so they couldn't have Chris do the voice. It's unfortunate, but that's just how things are. Guy Living in the Walls this refers to the random character whom Alan comes across when going through the inner walls of the Smiling Fred's headquarters. He just seems to be kind of chilling with his computer. Funnily enough, he is voiced by Finn Wolfhard, like the Stranger Things kid, which is certainly not what I expected. Spaghetti Alcohol This refers to the drinks that seem to be served at the Spaghetti Disco Bar in Trimp's Odyssey. They appear to be alcoholic beverages filled with what I think is supposed to be spaghetti, but honestly it doesn't really look that much like it. There's not much else to say here, as it's just a bit of a silly visual gag. James Rolf as the Devil This is just not actually true. I don't know why it's here. I suppose it's just a mistake. But this isn't the only place where I've seen people make this claim. I think it started because James Rolf is in the credits of the episode where Satan appears, and people just assumed he voiced Satan because of that. But that's not true. Satan is voiced by Zack. If you pitch up Satan's voice, it's very easy to tell. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's just becoming too much damn work, you know? James Rolfe does actually appear in the episode, though, in one random frame as Charlie descends into hell. Also appearing in this trippy slideshow is Mike from Red Letter Media. Hey, Mike. Bit me reference. This refers to the scene in the first episode where the boss breastfeeds that weird bean thing that appears to be his son. This scene is a direct reference to a previous animation Zack did in a deleted video called The Gremlo Art Show. In that video, a father basically has the same conversation with his child that the boss has with his kid. Though, it seems that the boss is less punitive in his discipline of the child, as he doesn't appear to physically harm him, unlike the guy in The Gremlo Art Show. Glip can actually talk. For almost the entire series, Glip never actually speaks anything discernible. He just babbles in this made-up language called Wingon, and the characters just understand him. But in the epilogue of the season finale of Smiling Friends, Glip in the future breaks his habit of speaking that language, and instead he speaks English. So now I wonder if the present day Glip can speak normally and just chooses not to. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. 3D Glip this refers to the 3D model of Glip that danced during the Adult Swim premiere of Smiling Friends. It's a pretty neat animation created by Matt Siegel, and Glip really gets his groove on. Sentry Egg This refers to the bizarre fast food item that used to be sold at Salty's fast food restaurant. It's an egg that you bury in the ground for 100 days and then dig up and eat. I didn't actually know this, but sentry eggs are actually a real food. It's a Chinese delicacy, where an egg is preserved in a mix of clay, ash, salt, and other materials and eaten several weeks to several months later. Of course, in the real world, sentry eggs do not talk and are not conscious of their own existence, and do not need to be imprisoned in your basement. Smiling Friends Saves Adult Swim This is probably not true. At all, really. I mean, I love Smiling Friends, but I don't think it made a big enough splash to save Adult Swim from certain doom. Primarily because, well, I don't think Adult Swim is doomed or anything. Adult Swim still has shows like Rick and Morty, which are huge cultural touchstones, and because of that, I don't really buy into this narrative that Smiling Friends played this role. That's not to say Smiling Friends hasn't made a positive impact, it certainly has, I just don't think it really was a make or break situation. Grease killed Simon S. Salty we're now just approaching the realm of joke theories. This is just a joke theory that the Puddle of Grease is responsible for the unfortunate death of Simon S. Salty. This isn't true, as Simon is confirmed to have died of a heart attack. But, when you think about it, Simon's heart attack was likely caused by a lifetime diet of high-fat fast foods. And what are fast foods covered in? That's right, Grease. So maybe that little puddle isn't as innocent as he claims. Mr. Boss as Charlie Brown. In the Halloween special, almost everyone in the Smiling Friends headquarters is wearing a costume. For example, Mr. Boss is clearly wearing the iconic outfit of Charlie Brown from Peanuts. Alan is dressed like 2019's Joker, and Glip and his girlfriend cosplay as the Reagans. I really like these costumes, and hope that one day we get another Halloween special so the creators get another chance to dress everybody up like this again. Smormoo's Death 
I brought this up already, but this refers to the fact that Smormu dies right after he is added to the cast of Smiling Friends in the third episode. The obituary is dedicated to him, and we even get to see an image of what appears to be his dead body. We don't know the cause of death, though. Pilot episode unsettling vibes. This one could either be really simple or really complex, depending on how you look at things. The simple answer is that the unsettling vibes being mentioned on the iceberg refer to the existential dread that is displayed by Desmond and later Pym in the episode, but it might be more complicated than that. When first reading this part of the chart, I was quickly reminded of the wet dry world negative emotional aura topic on the Super Mario 64 iceberg, and thought it might refer to a similar phenomenon. And, if it is, I can understand where that claim is coming from. The writing style and sense of humor of the plot differ slightly from the rest of the series, if only by a little. The episode displays a bit more of the absurd and unsettling humor that the creators are famous for, and there are a higher number of creepy and bleak tangents this episode goes on than in the episodes that follow, so I can definitely see this. Mr. Frog is real. This is either a joke theory about Mr. Frog being real, or it's referring to the part of his episode where he appears and tries to hurt the woman hosting the documentary about him, who is portrayed in live action. I can't really confirm it either way. So I'll leave you with this fun fact. Mr. Frog was one of the first characters ever made for Smiling Friends. He was even made before Pim and Charlie. It started while the creators were still brainstorming what they even wanted the show to be. And Michael Cusack drew a weird yellow thing that Zack thought was a bug. They decided to put wings and feet on it and quickly made the Mr. Frog character to eat him. And that was the birth. Worms. This refers to the worms that Pym mistakes for peanuts at the beginning of the third episode of the show, Shrimp's Odyssey. The reason he mistakes it for peanuts is that his eyesight is really bad and he hasn't bothered to get glasses or contact lenses. I don't know why he didn't find anything wrong with the taste. What's interesting is that the random appearance of worms was foreshadowed in an Oni Plays video by Zack. He said it would appear in the second episode. The reason he said second and not third, I presume, is that he didn't count the pilot as episode one, thus rolling back the number of every other episode. VR chat models of Mr. Frog and Jeremy. I can't confirm what this is referring to 100%, but I am 99% sure it is referring to the VR chat models made by the VR chat YouTuber Cyberchimp and his smiling friends but it's in VR video. In that video, he shows off two models he made of the characters Mr. Frog and Jeremy, and they look really fuzzy. The Fun Twins Origins. The Fun Twins are two bizarre creatures that hang out with the rest of the mascots at Simon S. Salty's. Based on their appearance in the episode, they are not the best communicators, but they do tell Pym what appears to be their backstory. In the past, they crash landed on a mysterious planet and fought against many foes with whatever weapons they had, and eventually they ended up in some crazy dimensional portal. Or at least that's what I think it's trying to depict. It's hard to know for sure. Simon S. Salty Green Screen Recording in the Simon S. Salty episode, when Charlie and Pim first enter the building, they come across a promotional video for the restaurant where Simon talks about some menu changes brought about because of the FDA. The video is obviously recorded of Perry Caravello in front of a green screen, but the green is keyed out in the final cut. We've never seen the original green screen footage, though. The Dancing Alien this refers to the subject of the TV show Pym is watching at the start of the first episode. It appears to be some random alien looking thing busting some moves. Pym is enthralled by it, but Charlie is not as interested. Pym's father is also seen watching the program later on. At the end of the episode, the dancing creature breaks out of its rectangular prison and scares the hell out of Charlie and Alan. Anyway, this creature was animated by Chris O'Neill, and the music it's dancing to was composed by him as well. Also, he kind of reminds me of SCP-173. The video that Glip watches in episode 1. In one scene in the first episode of the show, you can see Glip watching a strange live action video. The video portrays a man in a fedora making a bunch of weird hand gestures. The video in question is by an online figure known as Lugus the Magnificent, a proud atheist and philosopher. Even if you've never heard of him, you might have seen one of his old online posts before, as some of them have gotten serious traction. Lucas the Magnificent is actually a made-up character portrayed by Michael Cusack, one of the creators of the entire show. There's a really good video about it done by Wavy Websurf, which I definitely recommend you check out if you're interested in learning more about the easter egg. Unconfirmed second season. Well, this part of the iceberg is out of date. Smiling Friends has already had an order for a season 2, so we can expect that at some point in the coming years. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely excited. Hidden Smiling Friends lore. If we're being honest, the lore of Smiling Friends outside of what you can gather from the episodes is pretty thin. Though, there was one tweet by Michael Cusack that explained the question of why Alan and Glep don't wear clothes. It's because apparently, the main four Smiling Friends are all a species called Critters, which live among humans but are slightly different. Primarily, they dislike wearing clothes, so usually they don't wear anything, 
but Charlie and Pim do get dressed because their job requires going out interacting with people. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Smiling Friends was originally a web series. I don't think this is true. I couldn't find any source of anyone ever saying that Smiling Friends was originally intended to be an online thing. I'm pretty sure Zack and Michael originally thought it up hoping it could find its way onto network television. I think some people might have this idea because both Zack and Michael have a history with online animation. Or something. Also, because some of you might not know this, Smiling Friends was not Zack's first attempt at ever getting a show on television. He originally tried to get Hellbenders on Adult Swim, but his request was turned down, apparently because there were too many shows centered around Hell at the time on the channel. That's right, Mr. Pickles is what stopped Hellbenders from getting on Adult Swim. Wow. Dancing Alien Hidden Lore Yeah, I really don't have anything to say here. I basically covered everything mildly interesting I could find about the alien character that was shown on the screen. Maybe I'm missing something, so if there's anything absolutely outrageous I didn't bring up earlier, you can let me know in the comments, but I doubt that will actually happen. Mustard X Charlie Fanfiction I feel kinda bad coming back to you all empty-handed, but after browsing a bunch of fanfic websites and looking through them to see if I could find any Smiling Friends fanfiction dedicated to the Mustard X Charlie pairing, I could not find a single one. Though, in my defense, I think this was just added to the iceberg as a joke and this elusive fanfic doesn't actually exist. Yet. Maybe someone will watch this video and take it upon themselves to make this a reality. While looking through the fanfics though, I did come across a lot of content dedicated to Pim and Charlie. So, you know, if that's your thing, help yourself I guess. Smormu is still alive. This is almost certainly just added as a joke, but I guess I'll entertain the theory anyway. Smormu dies at the end of Smiling Friends Episode 3, right after he is added to the cast. We've been over this before. But listen, people have faked their own deaths in the past. And think about it, is there any real evidence that the person in the obituary actually is Smormu? There's certainly a resemblance, but there are a few things I do find strange. Notably, the color of his skin. It's almost a greenish yellow, contrasted by the light teal color we see of him alive. Now, in the process of liver mortis, the skin does change color, but the change is a bit too dramatic for me to stop being suspicious. If Smormu has the money, he could potentially get a body double or something for the image. Or maybe it's a work of Photoshop. I don't know. I'm just trying to find the truth. And honestly, the more I think about it, the idea that the Smiling Friends creators would fake Smormu's death and bring him back in the future as a joke seems less and less unlikely. Pim is still depressed after the pilot. Once again, this is just a joke theory. Pim falls into a state of existential angst at the end of the first episode, but by episode 2 he's right back to his old cheery self. You might argue that his optimism is just an act, but I can't really see this being the case. If he really stays as spiritually broken and disillusioned with his own life as he is at the end of the first episode, I couldn't imagine him even caring enough to put in the effort to pretend to be alright. So I think it's safe to say that Pim is alright for the time being. Desmond's Big Day Out Deleted Scene In the production of Smiling Friends, there were several jokes and scenes that needed to be cut or shortened for the episodes to fit into the 11 minute time slot. One example is that in the pilot, there was actually going to be more time spent on the sequence of Charlie and Pim trying to cheer up Desmond. In one scene, apparently, they were going to take Desmond to a beach. Sadly, there was going to be an oil spill and dead dolphins everywhere. But for the interest of time and also because the scene seemed a bit redundant, they chose to take it out and just end the whole cheering up part with Dave Land. It's a cool tidbit though. And with that final topic, that completes the whole Smiling Friends iceberg. Thanks again to the Reddit user who made it, and thank you for going on this journey with me. I had a great time making this and I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys like it. If you are interested in more Smiling Friends videos, feel free to check out my video where I rank the episodes of the first season. And if you like icebergs, feel free to check out one of my other iceberg videos if you'd like. I'll see you all around.